Good evening, guys. Uh, my name is Harpreet. I work with Cisco as a uh, solutions architect. Uh, my primary focus is on the unified computing system with virtualization. Uh, I thank you very much for taking out your time and uh, coming to attend the presentation about, about uh, DR solution with VMware UCS uh, and VMware and UCS. So, uh, I believe um, how many people of, uh, sitting here have a DR solution or planning to have one? You already have one. Great. So, now, uh, since the disaster recovery solution is one of the prime uh, objectives for any organization which we, are, uh, which we have in the, uh, in the industry, now, it could be any, any organization, which could be from healthcare, it could be from automotive, it could be an ID organization. As long as you have a data center in, in place, you need to make sure that the business operations are continued, they are up and, up and running at all times. Because if the business operations ha uh, have a failure for some reason, it's a partial failure, it's a total failure, that could lead to a lot of business loss. That could lo lead to a lot of revenue loss as well, right? So disaster recovery becomes a very prime objective for any organization who have a who have a, uh, a data center in place. Correct. Now, with the disaster recovery as a word, there comes a lot of questions. Why do we need a disaster recovery solution? What kind of solution would be good for the business? Right. What kind of investment is required to have a disaster recovery solution in place? So all those questions come around the word disaster recovery. Now, why do we need a disaster recovery? Is only to protect the business from risk, risk of failure, right? Risk of being out of function for an hour, for a day, for a week. So the moment the company, the, the data center has a, has a threat that it could be potentially out of business, that could be a potential business loss as well, right? It could have a big dollar value along with it. Now, the risk could be in any phase. It's unpredictable. The scope of risk is not defined, right? Because it's a risk. You don't know what kind of risk is going to hit. Is it going to be a natural disaster? Is it going to be a, a, a terrorist attack? Is it going to be a partial failure? Power outage? So the risk could be anything happening at any point of, point of time. It could be at any point in the day, any time, any day of the week. So the risk is a big factor which drives the whole disaster recovery. Now, in a normal business operations, when you have a data center up and running, everything is fine, the operations are working just fine. As long as the organization has a plan B, everything is good. Now, if you don't have a plan B, that's not good because the, the operations on the, on the, disaster, uh, on the uh, data center without a disaster recovery solution is open to threat. If it goes down, the business goes down as well. So, if you have a plan B, as you can see, from the normal operations, if a disaster is hit, the disaster could be a partial disaster, it could be a whole site failure. As long as you have a plan B, you can fail back to your plan B. You can go back to your disaster recovery site, you can resume your operations, that could depend upon the policies and kind of setup you have, how long it takes to resume your operations from a DR site. Now, once you are back online from the DR site, you can take your time to fix the disaster, the, the, the destroyed site, right? You can bring your functions back online from the primary site. So once that is done, you can go back to your normal operations. Now, the whole idea about the disaster recovery is that how do you go from your primary site failure to have your operations running on the DR site? That's a big question mark. Now, if you don't have the policies and procedure in place, this could be a very, very hard journey, going from a disaster site on the A site A to get your operations up and running from the site B. Now, that, that's a big, tough journey, right? So you need to have your SOPs in place. You need to have your equipment in place, updated. You have to have uh, log track changing, right? So I'm going to talk about how you can have a DR solution in different scenarios. So let's look at the example here first with a, with a conventional environment which could be consistent of uh, rack mount servers, uh, a blade chassis, or any kind of server. 
Now, in a conventional environment, you will have your operating system living on the hard drives on the server, on the physical blade or a rack mount. And your virtual machines will be on a shared storage, right? Because VMware, with all the uh, cluster features, the disaster recovery, uh, no, not the disaster recovery, sorry, the high availability and the vMotion, they need a shared storage. So I'm assuming that your virtual machines are already on the shared storage. However, your ESX or ESXi, the installable ESXi, is installed on the local hard drive. So you take this along, this is your primary data center, it's up and running, and you set up your DR site. You have your identical hardware on the DR site, which is up and running with the exact number of OS or lower number of OS running on the DR site, right? Now this is capable of having your business functions up and running in case of a disaster strikes on your site A. Now this could be that you're running 100 applications here, but you might want only 80 to run from the DR site if a disaster strikes. You don't want all the 100 to run. Now, to have your DR site enabled, you need to have a replication from site A to site B. So your all the data from site A is sent over to site B. So that when disaster strikes here, you can power it up from the site B. Now, imagine in this situation when a primary site goes bad, it goes down. You have your VMware SRM in place, right? So SRM kicks in. Now what Site Recovery Manager does is it has predefined policies, scripts, which will make sure that your business operations bring are brought online from the DR site. It can integrate with your storage arrays. It can break the replication. It can make sure the target volumes here are brought online, are presented to the ESX or ESXi server to bring your virtual machines up and running on the DR site. So this is already taken care of, right? This is the primary solution which you will see in the day-to-day -day environment. Now, you have already protected your virtual machines. You have replicated the uh, virtual machines from your site A to site B, and you have powered it up them on, uh, on the DR site. Now, what about the local ESX, which were installed on the local hard drive? That's something which you have not replicated. To have your virtual machines running on the DR site, you need to make sure that your ESX is already installed on the DR site. It's an up and running, it's configured. It sees the volume, and it brings your virtual machines up online. Now for that, you need to make sure that your ESX is already installed there.